Welcome back to Fast Gadgets. The bloodletting has begun at Canonical. So if you watched my previous video about the cancellation of Unity and the fact that Canonical has decided not to continue with the Unity desktop interface, so not only are they going to continue with number seven. Come here, Meadow. Come here, bud. Come here. Come here. Pardon me. It's okay. Not only are they not going to continue with Unity number seven, but they're canceling the convergence of Unity eight. Uh, they were previously, of course, going to create this uh, desktop interface that was supposed to allow for a common platform, a common environment, whether it was on a phone or it was on a desktop computer or maybe even a tablet. Now, some of you have tried it on tablets and some of you have phones that have the desktop environment on it. One of the big criticisms was that there weren't very many applications for it. And since that announcement, uh, Canonical says that they are going to cut about 80 employees. Now, this article is coming from the register. So if you want to check it out, the register.co.uk and they're reporting that prior to the announcement that about 80 employees were going to be cut, 31 employees actually left voluntarily. And it's hard to say what started that. Now, these employees that left uh, did it just before, well, after the announcement that Mark Shuttleworth was going to return as the CEO. Now, he's been absent for I believe it's about six years now as CEO and he's going to take over uh, eight years. He's going to take over from Jane Silber. Does any of this surprise you? It doesn't me as we've talked about before. It's very difficult for a company to make a turn a really good profit on open source and this is the case and you can see how easy it is for a company to look like on the surface that they're very uh, flush they're a, a going concern to use an accounting term meaning that the company is doing really well uh, and they really weren't so that desktop environment was the first thing to get the axe if you look at open source companies companies that actually are making money on open source that are not that are for profit i should say uh, those companies have a niche market so they're basically creating a product maybe it's a database program uh, maybe it's a server program like Red Hat OS and if you look at Red Hat what they are actually selling isn't necessarily the operating system well they're not period right because it's open source what they're selling is their service to manage the operating system so you can go and get the open source uh, excuse me, the source code for Red Hat and download it and compile it yourself. Or even easier, you can just download CentOS and use the ISO and it's an exact mirror copy of Red Hat without the Red Hat logo. So CentOS is something that you can make use of and it's a server-side product and it is open source 100% and the organization behind it does not profit from it where Red Hat does. So the only reason somebody's going to go with Red Hat is because they need the uh, services that Red Hat offers, mainly the maintenance of the operating system. So what can Canonical offer? Well, they kind of have seen the writing on the wall. They know that they can't really make a whole lot of money from the desktop environment because nobody pays. Now, you may see an increase in software bundling with Ubuntu, which I think is probably going to happen. There's gonna be an increase on that, and many people will consider it a sellout, but the fact is, if you look at the research that they put into their operating system and how good it works and, and how stable it is, it really does mean that they're going to have to somehow turn a, a penny on that and make a little bit of money. It's going to GNOME, makes it very much similar to any other desktop experience. If you look at Ubuntu, you might ask yourself, well, the fact is now I could go with Debian because Debian is what Ubuntu is built on and Debian has the GNOME interface, so it's all there. But 
there is other stuff underneath the hood that we don't see that Ubuntu really does take time and canonical the company to work and develop. However, the desktop environment really isn't going to help them out financially. If they want to be a company that's going to continue to make money, their focus now is going to be on the cloud environment. So they're going to try and position themselves and their servers for uh, a cloud-based environment so that they can use that technology to hopefully strengthen their bottom line and make themselves once again solvent. Now it does look like based on the article from the register that they had some investors that came forward and basically were saying we're interested in positioning ourselves to invest in your company but in order to do that you have some projects that really aren't going anywhere and aren't worth pursuing as a company if you want to continue making money. So the this equity firm recommended dropping those particular products and one of those was Unity. Now they haven't said yet at Canonical what the other products are that are going to be dropped. Honestly at this point I wouldn't be surprised if the entire desktop OS was to be abandoned. Thinking of it this way there is a market for server products and knowledge of cloud services and infrastructure and it is possible for Ubuntu or excuse me Canonical to actually make money doing that so I could see where they would definitely go that route and try to shore up that bottom line that's I want I don't want to say it's my prediction but again it would not really surprise me if you're thinking of a company that's trying to make money and they have a product that they actually make very little money off of, uh, they've either got to cut the resources that are used to produce that product to a bare minimum or cut it all together. And I could see that happening. Or taking Ubuntu and basically making it available for anybody to develop. So making it an open source community project, much like Fedora is. So Fedora does get some funding from Red Hat and in turn Red Hat gets from the Fedora project new developments in the operating system and functions and features that they can use and put into Red Hat. However, that seems to work really well and Fedora is very lean as a project and as an organization and they seem to do very well. Ubuntu hasn't quite figured that out yet. so. I could see where in the future we might have an Ubuntu project that's primarily uh, open source coders or uh, not-for-profit organizations that are contributing code to Ubuntu and maybe some of the funds would be contributed from Canonical. But beyond that, it looks to me like the Canonical we're going to see in the future is going to be very, very different. Should you be dismayed? Not at all. Think all of the distributions that are out there that are Linux based and there are so many. Now if you've gotten used to Unity and you really love it you may have a few growing pains moving on to another distro or another desktop environment but GNOME is a very good desktop environment but I will say right now uh, for high definition displays it really doesn't scale all that well. It has some issues and well let me let me just I'm going to correct what I just said a little bit. It, it actually scales very well. The problem is with applications. So the application support doesn't scale very well. Now, if you use KDE, on the other hand, many of the KDE applications, of course, are going to scale perfectly. But even other applications, such as Firefox, scale really, really well in KDE. So that particular desktop environment is really on the ball, and it works well. GNOME is a little bit different, and if you do have a 4K display, it's going to be a little bit tricky. Uh, I have used it on my 4K display and my high DPI displays, and it's somewhat of a challenge, i got to tell you. So, um, HD, so if you do 1920 by 1080 p isn't too bad, but to be honest, if you really want really proper scaling 1600 by 900 is about the highest I would go and that's not because of again the desktop environment but it's more because of the applications so I would be curious to hear what you think it's getting extremely windy out here now but it's still beautiful tonight so will canonical change I'm gonna say yes quite a bit 
and how much remains to be seen. In some ways, looking at Canonical right now, it reminds me of Apple about 20 years ago when they were close to dying and Microsoft came forward and I think they gave them something like $95 million to help them pursue different products. And of course, Apple came back with the Venable iPhone and the MacBook they refreshed. And this was, you know, late 2010. I think that with Canonical, I'm not writing them off. It just might not be something we see on the desktop anymore. As always, thank you for watching. I always appreciate your being here. And if you really enjoyed this video, if you could like and share and perhaps subscribe and drop me a comment. Let me know what you think is going to happen to Canonical.